Welcome back. We are here on eToro and we're looking at the commodities market and we'll start by looking at the WTI oil contracts. And as you can see that we have broken through the 200 moving average. Uh, we are basically on the line of the Fibonacci retracement, the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement. We haven't broken through that. Um, and But basically the entire uh, trading week last week, we were above the 200 moving average. We ended up uh, breaking down significantly uh, on Friday, but we jumped up again. And at the moment, we're just on the edge of the 200 moving average. So what do we expect next week? Um, well, I think that we're going to see a little bit more of the same thing. We have been trading... Um, in this, in this, um, get it up here. In this area for well months at at this point, all the way back to June, end of uh, April, we uh, had this massive fall in the market due to the coronavirus, and then we had this massive jump. So we were completely oversold here. And then we were overbought, and now the market technically doesn't know what to do. Uh, we're just standing still. It's incredibly boring. I used to trade uh, WTI all the time. Now I'm just waiting because, um, well, nothing is happening. It's just basically a line here, and it's up one half a percent, and so on. Technically, it's just a waste of time. So at this moment, uh, I'm just waiting for something to happen to oil. Uh, if I look at um, technical indicators, oil should go down. But yes, how far down? Well, to the 50 moving average. That is basically the maximum this market will go down at the moment. If it breaks the 50 moving average, it will go much lower. But uh, that probably won't happen anytime soon. Uh, we'll probably go gradually going higher from here. That will take uh, a long time in order to get to uh, $49, $50 uh, as around this area here. So, well, the only thing to do is basically wait because uh, I'm not a buyer, not a seller in this market at the moment. I'm just, I, am this, um, I couldn't be bothered basically with this market. I technically just use this as a proxy for where the world economy is at the moment. And I think when you look at this price action here, it basically says the world economy doesn't really know. It's not a bull market. It is not a, it's not a, a bear market. It technically just is waiting to see what is going to happen. Uh, I do not expect this market to explode to the upside. Maybe if OPEC um, basically cuts oil production even more, then we'll see this market go higher. Um, I don't think that is going to happen. And if we if the world economy gets worse, uh, then probably we'll go lower from here. And if we were to break the 50 moving average, and my best guess of where we are going is basically to these Fibonacci retracement levels. So we could go to um, to the 30 level. That is a really nice rounded number. And we'll probably go down there and bounce. If you break this level, we'll go down to the 50, which is uh, at the $25. And if we break that, we'll go to $21. The problem is that I don't think we'll ever get down to here anytime soon. And the reason is that most oil companies, especially in the United States, have to have a price of oil that is higher than $30. Otherwise, they're not profitable. So they'll probably cut production uh, significantly in order to get the price up. So, yes. Um, that probably won't happen. But if we break the 50 moving average, be ready to see a market that basically just uh, falls all the way down to the 30 
uh, dollars. Um, so yes. So next is natural gas. So this is a far interested, uh, interesting market than um, than the oil market. So we had this massive jump in the price of uh, natural gas. And this is due to the uh, extremely warm temperature uh, in the United States and basically across the world at the moment. Um, we can discuss whether global warming is, uh, is true or not. I think that we basically see the facts if we just open our eyes and look at um, the news that things are changing in the world and they are the world is basically getting a war becoming a warmer place. Uh, and that has a positive effect on the price of natural gas. So we get these jumps in the price of natural gas, uh, for example, in winter times, and also when we have extremely warm uh, summers and so on, because we use uh, natural ga gas in order to cool our houses and so on, and we use natural gas in order to warm. So when the temperature Basically, it gets extremely warm, prices go up. When it gets extremely cold, the prices also jump really drastically. However, we are oversold, uh, overbought at this moment, and uh, we are about to go a little bit lower. Um, if I were to uh, estimate where we are going to, the Fibonacci retracements are uh, quite a, uh, fantastic tools to use at this point. Uh, we can see that the first one is at uh, 38.2, and that would be actually a perfect for this area here, because this is, uh, is uh, was previous uh, support. So I would my best guess is that we jump down to a pullback to uh, two dollars and fifty cents, um, and then bounce and go off from there. If we were to break this, we'll go to the fifty. I don't think that is going to happen. That's around two dollars and um, zero point one, and um, maybe because you can see that the fifty moving average is coming up here, and we will probably hit the fifty moving average and the uh, uh, fifty Fibonacci retracement at the same time. Uh, but my best guess is that we'll go down to the thirty-eight point two percent Fibonacci retracement, and then we'll go up from there. And as long as the temperatures are high, this market will just go higher. And it will go much, much, much higher. We can just see how drastic things can change when temperatures get, uh, get out of hand. Um, this was uh, the historically uh, cold um, winter uh, of 2018. And we went all, from, all the way from... Two point seven dollars all the way to uh, to almost five dollars within just a few uh, few months. So this market can, when it takes off, it takes off really drastically, and so on. Yes, and uh, next is a gold. So gold probably destroyed many traders' accounts um, uh, last week. Uh, and the reason why for that is that we have had this nice bull run for uh, quite a long time now. And people were expecting a pullback. And we did get a really nice pullback. And then they expected this market to go much higher. Uh, and when I say higher, I mean to retest these highs and even to go much higher than uh, uh, 2,100, probably 2,500 in some estimate. But what happened on Wednesday was that this market completely crashed. So all the people that uh, that were were buying, they had their accounts wiped out. And that's why you should use stop losses. I basically sold my all my uh, uh, gold positions or uh, before I went into this crash. So that's why you use stop losses. They're extremely handy. So this is not a good sign. We have three really bearish candlesticks um, at this moment. 
And uh, the reason why we had this crisis is because we have a strengthening in the U.S. dollar. So the U.S. dollar was uh, appreciating and uh, we saw major currency pairs just completely crash. That same goes for the, uh, for the gold market. So at this point, I do believe that will go much lower. I am, I'm not buying gold at the moment. I'm just going to wait and see what is happening. It's going to happen. We got all the way to $1,900, almost $1,900 um, on Friday before we jumped again. And uh, if we look at the weekly chart, it is not looking good for, for gold. Um, at this point, the technical indicators are indicating that we are going lower uh, at this point, especially the 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 stochastic is indicating that we are going lower also the macd is probably not this week but next week we'll see a, a, a massive uh, decline in the price of gold before we go higher we are it's, it's, it's very uh, normal that when you have uh, this kind of uh, bullish run that you will have pullbacks we had one in this area here and we are due to have one again here. Um, the question is, how far will it go down? Um, I'll, I will guess to the 50 moving average. So this will move up to the uh, 1,750 uh, level um, the next two, three weeks. And I would not be surprised if we basically um, had a decrease in the price of gold uh, all the way down to the 50 moving average before we bounced. Um, but these technical indicators are not looking good. And these candles here are really, really bearish. So, um, yes, watch out. I I'm not a buyer in this market at the moment. I'm just going to sit on the sidelines and watch what, with what is going to happen. This market will eventually um, increase. Um, to uh, 2,100, probably 2,500 within the end of this year. But at this at this stage, um, we are probably witnessing a pullback in this market. So, silver. So, um, silver, very similar. We'll go to the daily chart. Um, very similar to gold. We have this massive uh, bull run. At this moment, it looks like we're forming a flag pattern and we are eventually going to go higher. We just got way ahead of ourselves and we saw last week this really negative candlestick where prices fell by 12%. We then jumped back from there and now we're just trading sideways. At this point, I'm pretty sure that will go a little bit lower. Uh, probably, uh, probably will uh, get closer to the 50 uh, moving average, uh, similar to gold, and then we'll go higher from here. If you look at the weekly chart, it is the same as very similar to the gold uh, weekly chart. We can also look at the Fibonacci retracement here they will also indicate that we will most likely go down to this level, uh, which was previous support, and which would make sense that we'll go down to $22.81. And, and, uh, and or if we fall even further than that, to the 50 moving average, down to $20. Um, that is not unrealistic. I'm That would be a... Uh, really good entry for a buying opportunity. So just watch out. If this basically breaks, we'll probably go down to the 50 uh, Fibonacci retracement level. So uh, we have copper. And we'll look at the daily. So last week, I basically said that we were forming this... Uh, this uh, bullish flag pattern here. And um, I expected this market to explode to the upside. It did. 
uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we ran into resistant at around uh, at uh, at three point zero two, and then we fell quite substantially. Um, this was one of my best trades of the uh, last week. I I catch this uptrend here, and I sold when I got to to a three uh, because. I was expecting us to basically uh, to run into major resistance, so I didn't want to hold on to my positions. So I'm just gonna wait, and that appeared also to be the right choice. Uh, we had a massive pullback, and then we fell. And at this point, we did break this top here. So not at a double top, but we did have a pullback, and I'm guessing that we'll pull back to the. 50 moving average and then continue higher. Uh, at this point, um, the, the technical indicators are quite negative. We have the RSI pointing downwards. We have the stochastic crossing the line, putting the point, pointing downwards, and also the MACD is about to point downwards. But we can see that the 50 moving average, if we get down there, it was massive resistant uh, when we were here only a few days ago. And uh, I'm guessing that it will be massive resistant again. If it was to break, we have the 200 moving average underneath. And uh, yes, that will be a massive buying opportunity if we, if we get all the way down to the 200 moving average. Then we have Cocoa. Sorry. So, this... Uh, I people go can watch my previous videos on Cocoa and where I basically predicted that we would run into major resistance in this area here. Um, there's no reason why this market should explode to the upside. And at this point, I am. This looks like, um, like we're trading, in, within this. Um, in the, within the square, uh, and we are trading sideways. We're not trading. Uh, with, it's not a, uh, a bearish market. It's not a bull market. We're technically just trading within this area here. What I'm expecting to happen is that we'll go and retest this 50 moving average, and if it breaks, we'll go to the uh, to these to these lows of. Uh, um, that is one scenario. We had a massive pullback on Friday session, uh, but eventually we'll go down to the 50 moving average. I'm pretty sure of that. We can also look at the Fibonacci retracement, uh, and we can see that yeah, we did break the 38.2, and usually when we break the 38.2, you go to the 50. If the 50 breaks, then we will run into the 50 moving average, and this will probably cause a lot of uh, support. Uh, if we were to break this, I don't expect us to do. I expect us to uh, to uh, go up, down, and then just continue. And at some point, we'll probably break this uh, 50 moving average. Um, the technical indicators are fairly uh, negative. Uh, the RSI is uh, not overbought, not oversold. It is pointed upwards. Uh, the stochastic is really negative. And the, the MACD is also fairly negative. So I do expect us to go down to the 50 um, Fibonacci retracement. Uh, we'll probably have a bounce from here. Uh, if, we, if it breaks, then the 50 moving average just underneath. And if that breaks, then we have the 61.8 uh, Fibonacci retracement. So there's a lot of support in this area here. If this all of this were to break, then we'll, there is um, almost 100% certainty that we'll go all the way down to, to, you, to these lows. So, hope you find this video, uh, video uh, helpful. You're welcome to support our channel by subscribing, hitting the bell button and a like. And uh, good luck and uh, thank you very much.